understand the physics of a fast moving bicycle. A physicist engineer explains. How do bicycles go fast? Let's begin with explaining the bicycle part that touches the ground the wheels, rims, and tires. Bicycle wheels require good density and good grip and friction in order to push the bicycle and the rider forward. Commonly known and experienced by many riders is that flat tires would lack good density and grip. The tires work together with gravity to exert sufficient contact pressure onto the ground to create high friction in order for the rider to deliver sufficient forward push. A higher contact pressure exerted by the tires onto the ground would allow for higher friction and more effective forward push. Such can be easily achieved by reducing the contact area between the tires and the ground that will increase the concentration of the contact pressure. This means a reduction in the width and thickness of the tire. This is the reason why thin tires can be propelled easier than thick tires. Another method to achieve sufficient contact pressure between the tires and the ground is to utilize dense, solid rubber tires that have sufficient mass density to exert high contact pressure onto the ground to generate high friction. Of course, thin, solid tires lack the shock absorption and safety balance properties found in thick air fill tires. You should only use solid tires on clear, even paths and do wear a safety helmet. Another important factor in the tires and rims is that the bicycle wheels exert centrifugal spinning forces that keeps the wheels spinning. Think of this centrifugal force as the force that keeps the moon spinning around the earth. Wheel tires that hold more mass would also be able to hold more centrifugal spinning forces, which can keep the wheels spinning even when the rider has stopped pedaling. They can also exert and support more inertia forces to keep the bicycle moving even when the rider has stopped pedaling. Therefore, dense, solid rubber tires can create more centrifugal spinning forces compared to hollow, lower density air fell tires. We have seen how some cyclists are able to cruise their bicycles while the others have to pedal continuously because their tires lack sufficient mass density to keep spinning. Should we get tri spoke blade rims as opposed to using the wire spoke rims? Do they have any effect in reducing the wind resistance? Think of it this way wire spoke rims are similar to a wire whisk that can beat whipped cream at your wheels while you cycle, while the tri spoke blades are similar to ceramic knives that cannot beat whipped cream at your wheels. Now, let's move on to the bicycle frame. Why do bicycle frames allow for faster cycling speeds? The answer is found in the rider. The rider of a light bicycle frame is able to pedal faster as compared to riding on a heavier bicycle frame. Due to less muscle resistance at the pedals in overcoming the forces of gravity that hauls down the bicycle. Some have advised losing weight as opposed to spending thousands of dollars on a light frame bicycle in order to reduce the effects of gravity. However, buying a light frame bicycle will still be a stretch to your efforts even after you lose weight. For the reason of gravity holding down the bicycle, the mass density found in the tires also has to be at optimal weight to be able to exert sufficient contact pressure without holding down the bicycle too much with excess weight. Personalized customization has to be done for the bicycle together with the cyclist in order to achieve optimal contact pressure and centrifugal forces in the tires to achieve optimal forward thrust and arresting inertia to reach optimal speed. Now, moving on to the pedals. Similar to the tires, there has to be sufficient density and contact pressure between the shoes and the pedals during cycling. The shoe padding has to be at optimal density in order for the feet to exert sufficient contact pressure. Wearing shoes with too much padding will reduce the contact pressure and result in energy loss while pedaling. Moving on to the cycling position. A position where the rider is bent down would allow for easier pedaling because straightening the legs away from the body is much easier compared to sitting upright and bringing the legs towards the body. Such an effect can be demonstrated while riding uphill. Such a position can also reduce some wind resistance. Many people assume cycling tights work by reducing the wind resistance. However, such is not the main factor for its role to increase the cycling speed. 
The cycling tights tightens the body exterior and increases the body's density and internal pressure. Similar to how a dense solid tire is able to exert greater contact pressure on the ground, a denser body is able to concentrate energy to exert greater forces at the legs. Many of us feel more able to move forward and control our body due to wearing tight-fitting sports attire. Such compression gear can also relax the muscles for faster and better recovery. We have now come to the end of this video. I hope that it has enlightened you on the physics involved in a fast bicycle, as well as dispel commonly held false myths. Some last words of advice, it is important to keep your tires well pumped and your wheel chains lubricated with a non-sticky lubricant. And also, replenish your lost sodium through consumption of sodium chloride. If you have any questions or would like to know how to fine tune other bicycle parts to achieve greater speeds, do mention them in the comment section down below.